Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about cardiotocography, that means CTG. This is a very very important video. You need to be very concentrated on this thing because it the the topic is itself a very confusing topic many times. Now, let's start one by one. First of all, we start with the fetal heart sound. It is called FSH. Now what is FSH? FSH is a fetal heart sound. We say FSH means we take the fetal heart sound per minute. So it is a rate beats per minute. Okay. So what is the normal range of FSH? The normal range is 110 to 160. Again you need to remember one this thing. 110 to 160 is the range per minute normal range now what is a fetal bradycardia when the fetal heart rate fsh is less than 110 okay now when there is uh, what are the condition in which bradycardia occurs it may be due to mild head compression of the fetus when there is a contraction uterine contraction the head of the fetal baby, uh, fetal head is get compressed and because of the compression the vasovagal reflex will be there due to vasovagal reflex the heart rate will go down and the bradycardia will be there second if the fetal is compromised for example it is fetal is very hypoxic and the cns of the fetus is depressed at that point of time we get bradycardia third thing is <clears throat> congenital heart block in in this case also we got bradycardia now when there is a tachycardia tachycardia means the heart rate is more than 160 what are the reason of tachycardia most of the time the maternal fever is the reason of the fetal tachycardia it may be cardiac arrhythmia which is not very more or very common reason Met maternal parasympatho mimetics for example if mater ha uh, uh, mother has ingested atropine kind of things accidentally it might have uh, tachycardia but the very common thing is fetal compromise uh, when there is a fetal hypoxia initially fetal heart rate is higher because of the fetus is very anxious at that time and the reflexes are there that's why there is a tachycardia but after but the, if this tachycardia is not treated then again the fetal tachycardia converts into fetal bradycardia in some time okay now now i have made a very very simple arrangement graphical arrangement of ecg ctg sorry ctg cardio topography we have two axes x and y axis now this is the time in minutes this is 0 minute 10 minutes and 20 minutes you need to remember one thing when we do any time when we do a ctg we do it for 20 minutes this is the heart rate fsh 110 to 160 now these uh, two lines are uh, drawn at one at 110 and the second at 160 this gap is the normal range of heart okay this gap is a normal range of fsh now fetal heart rate is not steady it is fluctuating all the time it is fluctuating you need to see, see one this thing what is the baseline of ctg what is the baseline average fsh in 20 minutes baseline is what the, when we measure the FSH for 20 minutes, the average FSH that makes the baseline. For example, this red color line is a baseline. Okay, the baseline is at 140. It's not always 140, but in this case, we have made it at 140. Now, the heart rate fluctuates above and down the, that baseline. Now, the very second important thing is bit to bit variability. That means the fluctuation of FSH from the baseline. Okay, so 
what it should be what is the normal range the normal range is 5 to 25 means the heart rate is the fetal heart rate is, is not constant it is variable it should be variable i think there should be a variability of 5 to 25 beats per minute if there is no variability then it is abnormal another term you need to remember is acceleration what is acceleration how we define acceleration increase in fsh 15 beats per minute for 15 seconds so is the rule of 15 15 for 15 uh, increase rate 15 for 15 seconds minimum that we call acceleration what is the normal thing when we do a 20 minutes of CTG or non-stress test we must get two acceleration that makes it a normal thing if we don't have proper acceleration if we don't have any acceleration in that 20 minutes that means the CTG is not real uh, the NC the test test NST is not reactive and it is abnormal now let's define deceleration like acceleration deceleration means 15 second 15 second heart rate decrease 15 or more minimum 15 the heart, fetal heart rate has to decrease 15 beats per minute at least for at least 15 seconds so it's a simple definition of acceleration and deceleration now Now, what is the, uh, uh, let's see, low bit to bit variability. What it means? What is low bit to bit variability? For example, the heart rate is like this. It, it, it's just like a straight line. No bit to bit variability or very less, less than 5. Low bit to bit variability, what are the causes of low bit to bit variability? Fetal hypoxia. fetal hypoxia if the baby is sleeping it can happen if the baby is sleeping ingestion of some drugs maternal acidemia in all these cases we what we find is a very low bit to bit variability of fetal heart now one another uh, pattern of abnormal pattern of heart rate is sinusoidal heart rate these are like this this kind of graph makes the sinusoidal heart rate and what are the reason of sinusoidal heart rate the main reason is fetal anemia it may be due to rh isoimmunization or it may be due to ruptured vasa previa we need fetal anemia and the fetal anemia will cause sinusoidal pattern, twin to twin transfusion. Okay, so you got what is sinusoidal heart rate. Now, we uh, just discuss about deceleration. Deceleration means the fetal heart rate be decreases for at least 15 beats per minute for at least 15 seconds. Now, there are three types of deceleration. If you see in this graph, uh, there is a, a window of normality, 110 to 160 heart rate, and the baseline is settled at 140. Now the, this graph suggests the uterine contraction. So this is a uterine contraction, and again this one is uterine contraction. If you see the heart rate, if you see the graph of heart rate, this is definitely a deceleration. This is also definitely a deceleration. But if you see the deceleration, it coincides with the uterine contracture. When the uterus start, starts contracting, there is a deceleration starts. And when the uterine contraction is over, the deceleration is also over. 
This is a normal deceleration. It occurs due to compression of the fetal head while doing uterine contraction. Okay, so it is a very normal deceleration and it deceleration is called early deceleration. It is called early. Early decelerations are normal. Now let's concentrate on this graph. Here also you can see uterine contraction. Here also you can see uterine contraction. But if you see the deceleration, here where here the uterine contraction starts. But here, if we see the heart rate, heart rate doing uh, heart rate start decreasing at the peak of uterine contraction. And when the uterine contraction is over here, the heart rate is still down. There is still deceleration. It doesn't come to normal as soon as the uterine contraction is normal. That means this deceleration is a late deceleration. And this my friends is a very dangerous thing. Late deceleration is very very dangerous. It suggests you utero placental insufficiency. And when there is utero placental insufficiency, we should have options of early as soon as delivery of the baby when the baby is uh, of having uh, uh, lung maturity at 34 weeks. So this late deceleration is a very dangerous thing. Now third type of deceleration is there. If you see, this is uterine contraction. This is also uterine contraction. But these decelerations are variable. They don't just correlate with this uterine contractions. So what can be the reason? The reason is it's because of umbilical cord compression. These decelerations are not per se very dangerous, but we have to monitor frequently. If it doesn't recover by giving uh, oxygen to mother, uh, by giving the fluid to the mother, it is persistent, then we should, again, it becomes dangerous and we should think about delivery. Now, uh, some uh, very small amount of management has been given. If there is a late deceleration, that means there is utero-placental insufficiency. And what we do next step is we do fetal acidemia. And we need to do delivery immediately. If there is a variable deceleration, we need to check. We need to maintain hydration first, oxygen, oxytocin so we should stop. We should do recheck. We should monitor. If variable deceleration persists, then we have to deliver the baby. Okay. As I told you, early deceleration is very normal. So this is how you read a CTG. I hope you now become very easy about the CTG. Thank you.